There are thousands of millions of us living on the Earth. And in many ways, we're all the same. We're all people. We're all the same kind of animal. And yet we recognize each other because of our differences. We differ from each other in lots of little ways. So there are millions and millions of people, all slightly different. But we share the Earth with other living things. We're just one of many thousands of different kinds of animals. And every kind of animal is different. In fact, we use the differences to divide animals into the different kinds. But because of all these differences, it's easy to forget that we animals also have a lot in common with each other. For instance, we all move. And we all breathe. And we all eat. These things are part of being an animal, part of being alive. Although no two animals and no two kinds of animals are exactly the same, we do all have certain things in common. Later, we'll see why this is. Now, animals are not the only living things. They share the Earth with millions of other living things. Hundreds and thousands of different kinds of plants. Go into any big garden and you'll soon see some of these differences. For instance, look at the different flowers. different shapes, different sizes, different colors. There are some plants that produce lots of closely bunched leaves. Others have swollen stalks, which we can sometimes eat. And others produce fruit. And sometimes it's the size of the leaves that makes the difference. Every type of plant is different. And if you concentrate on one type, such as trees, you soon see that every single plant is different. All the apple trees in this orchard are different. No two trees are exactly the same. None of these flowers is exactly the same. Especially when you look at them closely. Of course, different plants also have things in common with each other. 
for instance, most of them have green leaves. Most have stalks or trunks. And below ground, most have roots. But there's something else, something which all plants have in common, and something they share with animals, including you and me. To find out what this is, we'll have to take you to some slightly unexpected places. We can start by looking at one of the simplest living things. Living in this pond water are many tiny, tiny animals, too small to be seen with the naked eye. You have to put a drop of water on a slide, cover it to stop it running away, and then look at it under a microscope. It's only under a microscope that you can see these animals in detail. Believe it or not, this is an animal. It moves and eats, just like other animals. Although there isn't much to it, especially when you see it as a drawing, don't be misled, it is alive. It's called an amoeba, and it's very small. If you could get 20 of them sitting in a row on your ruler, the whole row would only be one centimetre long. An amoeba is just about the simplest animal you can get. This is a model of one. It shows only the most important features. Around its outside, the amoeba has a very special kind of skin, which is called a membrane. Inside the membrane is a sort of thick juice called the cytoplasm. In our model, the cytoplasm looks like sponge. The blob in the middle is called the nucleus. An amoeba is a single, self-contained unit of life. Now, if an amoeba is just about the simplest living thing, human beings are just about the most complicated animals there are. For instance, we have complicated senses, such as seeing and hearing. We're very skilled. But we do still have something in common with an amoeba and something in common with plants. To try to find out what that is, let's have a close look at plants. First, we want to look inside a leaf. So we need a very thin slice to put under our microscope. One way is to put the leaf inside a very soft piece of wood, which holds it firmly so it can be sliced, in this case, with a sharp old-fashioned razor. And what does the slice look like under the microscope? A leaf isn't the same all the way through. The inside looks as if it's made up of lots of separate bits, like pebbles on a beach. We can get another interesting specimen like this. If we carefully tear a lettuce leaf, we can peel off some of the very thin outer layer.
Let's look at this outer layer under a microscope. Separate shapes again. We can draw these separate shapes in a simplified way. And we can make a model of one of the shapes. Slice across the model and there are the things we saw before when we looked at the amoeba. The membrane, the cytoplasm, that's the bit that looks like a sponge, and the nucleus. One of these whole units is called a cell. Because it comes from a plant, it's a plant cell. This picture of a leaf slice is made with a very powerful microscope. But again, it seems clear that a leaf is made up of lots of tiny building blocks, cells. Every part of a plant is made up of cells. The cells are very similar to an amoeba, except, of course, that an amoeba is a simple animal, an animal made up of a single cell. But what about more complicated animals? What about us? It turns out that animals, too, are made up of cells. Cells are the building blocks of all living things. That's what all living things, plants and animals, have in common. Of course, cells aren't just like bricks in a wall. For a start, they're not all exactly the same. There are lots of different sorts of cells. Even the cells that make up the different parts of a plant are all slightly different. Let's use our microscope to look at the cells in the next layer down in a leaf. These cells are different and they're special. They contain green stuff, which soaks up the sunlight and helps to make food for the plant. Now let's look at the part of a plant we don't normally see, the roots. As the roots get longer, things like tiny hairs grow out sideways. These are root hair cells and they're long and thin. They stick out into the soil and collect the water the plant needs. They're specially shaped to do a special job. So, plants are made up of cells, and many of these cells are special. They're able to do special jobs. Getting back to people, they are also made up of cells. This is skin under the microscope. Those shapes are cells. Animals, and particularly humans, can do many difficult and complicated things. So it's no surprise to find that we have specialized cells to do special jobs. For instance, we have muscles, and muscles are made up of bundles of special cells, muscle cells. Muscle cells are special because they can make themselves shorter, so the whole muscle gets shorter and something moves. Other cells, like this, nerve cells, carry messages from the brain. Parts of them are long and thin, and they act like telephone wires. 
That's how muscle cells know when to shorten. So, animals are made up of a mass of different cells with special jobs to do. However, we can say some general things about animal cells. The scientist carefully takes a sample of her own blood. You shouldn't try this yourself, there's a danger of infection. The scientist wants to look at a type of cell which is part of the blood. You can see these cells if you look at blood under a microscope. There are many red cells and some white cells. White blood cells are typical animal cells. But are they in any way similar to plant cells or to an amoeba? We can use a model to see what a white cell is like. You can't see much from the outside but cut across the cell and you see the features you've seen before. Membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus. Most cells have these three main features. So, living things are built up of different kinds of cells doing different jobs. But there are still more questions. Where did they come from? And how did they grow? In people, these cells are part of the answer. And here's another part of the answer. It's an egg. In one sense, these two cells are perhaps the two most important cells there are. Although on their own they may not seem anything special, in the next program we'll show you how they get together and how the growing happens. Remember, despite the fact that we often look different, and we might even think we are different, in one important way, all living things are the same. We're all made up of the building blocks of life, which we call cells.